Number seven, hold fast to God's biblical institution of marriage between one man and one woman. God's Word confirms biblical marriage, biblical human sexuality, and the biblical family as instituted by God Himself at creation. The rampant sexual aberrations in the world are not condoned by the Bible and will not lead to eternal life. Sexual immorality in any form is to be submitted to God's power to change us into His likeness. God's ideal is to be followed, again through His power, to put us in a right relationship with His moral and natural laws. This is not an impossibility, for the Bible clearly indicates in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 11, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now, my brothers and sisters, let me tell you, we need to treat everyone with love, respect, and dignity. But I want to tell you, you draw the line in terms of what is sin and what is not sin by the Word of God. <laughs> Hold fast what you have. Hold fast in humility to spiritual and biblical respect for God's authority, showing respect for God, working in His church through appropriate bodies and careful observance of Bible and spirit of prophecy counsel. Hold fast what you have. Hold fast your great appreciation, use, and promotion of the spirit of prophecy, the writings of Ellen G. White. This is a heavenly gift to this church. I, I want to express deep appreciation to this body for what you did on Thursday when you affirmed by an enormous majority the statements affirming the holy word of God and the writings of Ellen White. Thank you for what you have done. What a privilege it is for us to listen to the Word of God and to share the Word of God as it reads, not as you may imagine you would like it to read. And for some of you who may in some future meetings, find that some small group may attempt through manipulation of parliamentary procedure to somehow put an end to the statements of affirmation for the Word of God and the spirit of prophecy, let me tell you God will always overrule. There is nothing, nothing that can stand in the way of pure truth. Truth will always prevail. Hold fast what you have. Number 10. 
hold fast to biblical church growth principles and the heavenly explanations of evangelistic growth as revealed in the spirit of prophecy. Hold fast what you have. Number 11, hold fast your faithfulness to God's unique Advent movement, resisting any compromise with ecumenism and neutralization of the pure Word of God. Yes, make friends with people. Explain things to people. Be a good part of the Christian community. But realize we have been called to a unique place in history as the Seventh-day Adventist Church. God intends that His church move forward without compromise on the pathway to eternal, the eternal city led by Jesus Christ Himself. Difficult days lie ahead as God's remnant people will receive everything that the devil can throw at us. In some way, trying to impede the forward advance of God's Advent movement. We know what the Omega, we know that the Omega is coming, I should say, and it will test all church members to rely completely on God to avoid great and overwhelming decep deception and compromise. Do not compromise by entering into ecumenical activities that take away and distract your understanding and belief of the Word of God. Look only to Jesus and His full biblical truth. Hold fast what you have. Hold fast to the core of our salvation and the everlasting gospel. Christ's righteousness, His justifying righteousness by faith, and His sanctifying righteousness by the Holy Spirit working in us. Christ's righteousness is what will save you. Christ and His grace and nothing else. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 10 proclaim the New Testament proclamation of what Genesis 3.15 proclaimed in the Old Testament and for all time. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 testifies, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are His workmanship. Let me repeat that. We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In contrast to self-centered salvation by works, Christ calls us to an understanding that His death on the cross, His current intercession for us in the literal most holy place of His literal heavenly sanctuary. And yes, brothers and sisters, I believe there is a literal sanctuary in heaven and the promise of eternal life that is soon second coming. You see, we can only receive this and the many gifts He gives to us through His grace. The promise of Genesis 3.15 is about to be fulfilled when God said, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his, Christ's, heel. What a promise, packed with God's authority, saving power, future destruction of the devil, and the promise of eternal life through the victory of Christ over the devil. Hold fast what you have.